I'm Ken Jr. and welcome to Train World TV. Here you'll find the latest and greatest in model trains. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new to our channel, we're glad you're here and I invite you to click the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you'll never miss a video. Now, we'd also love to send you exclusive deals and special announcements that you won't find anywhere else. So be sure to sign up for our emails, TW text, and stay connected with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Now, you can find all the links in the description box below or trainworld.com. And without further ado, enjoy today's video. and good evening everybody and welcome to train world tv and we have a very exciting episode tonight and uh ken senior is with me how you doing dad i'm doing great thanks for inviting me back ken and uh thank you all <laughs> you uh all the customers out there people watching we appreciate all your support and thanks for tuning in again and i i bet you everyone's wondering where's mike where's mike well we we brought Mike, we brought York Mike, but uh, <laughs> no, no, we 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 figured you guys uh, would be disappointed if we brought a cardboard cutout of Mike. So uh, we wanna, we are proud to introduce the the Jedi of the night and the return of the Jedi, Mike Wolf. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? Uh, good. This show's changed since I uh, was on it last. <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot's changed since we, we last spoke and you've been busy and uh shaking and wheeling dealing and uh doing all kinds of stuff and i'm sure everybody out there and uh, the views keep on increasing and everybody wants to hear from you see from you uh, know how you're doing and we all miss you and, uh, <laughs> it, it truly isn't the same without you and we, i i tell you it's uh you, you really were an icon of this industry and a, a, a true titan. And, uh, it, you know, it, it's it's definitely different not having you around. So it, it's it's well, bittersweet I, because I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm, 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 uh, you know, MTH is still going and, uh, you know, it's just a different business model. Um, it kind of worked out that way. It wasn't originally planned that way, but it just right. kind of fell into place uh you know a lot of a lot of things changed that last year uh after so, i announced so what exactly happened are you are you guys you, you guys are in business you're still producing training uh, so so I, yep, yep i still own the business and i you know every morning for probably about an hour i i uh, you know answer emails i still communicate with the, the factories overseas uh, you know, off and on what's going on. And uh, I wish I could still go over there, but it's still not uh, still not able to go over there with the, the COVID restrictions and, and what it takes to get into the country, so particularly China. But, um, you know, it's, I still do that. I still watch everything, but uh, pretty much uh, uh, there's, there's four employees that I have now, um, which is a lot less than we had before. And they're, they're doing real well. Rich Foster's, uh, uh, spearheading it, uh, and, uh, you know, tr trying to stay organized. It'll never happen, but he's trying. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know, when we, when I started it, I thought, well, that would be the end of everything. And, and, uh, I was, I sold the building and I sold off, uh, started, started to, to market the, the tooling, uh, to other manufacturers. And we sold a good bit of it to, uh, to Atlas, we sold some to Lionel, as everyone knows, and we sold to uh, Scale Trains, uh, 
Um, and I was continuing to sell the stuff. And then uh, these employees came to me and they were they had gone out to some of those manufacturers and some other manufacturers to see if they could uh, broker a deal where they came and worked for those companies and and continued the the line. And, and I always wanted to keep the PS3. I, that was part of the deal. I was I wasn't going to release that. So we were going to continue to develop that and then go to other manufacturers like we have with Atlas. Atlas is now buying the PS3 boards uh, DC, and so their engines will run on DCS. And um, so you know, that was kind of the plan that I would just be in the electronics business, develop the electronics, the apps, and continue that with uh, Dave Kriebel up in Michigan, where our Michigan office is still still there, and he's still. Uh, working on that, working on the the new Wi-Fi TIU and a bunch of other stuff, and his his, his job now is is predominantly trying to find electronic parts to keep the production going. It's 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 you know the the problem out there when people say they can't get a a car, uh, you know the car lots are empty, and and uh, you know I, I'm doing some home renovations, and and you try to buy a Yamaha amp and you can't, you can't find them unless you're paying you know twice of what the retail price was because the the uh, the components are uh, so hard to get and and the market is so crazy I mean, we were supposed to build 16,000 boards in July and all of a sudden the, the company that makes the one amplifier part decided to cancel the PO because they couldn't get the wafers made and they just they just canceled the order and uh, you know, uh, it didn't say, well, we'll ship you some next month or the next month. No, it just canceled. And if you want to order them again, you can get them in about a year and a half. And uh, so wow. so right now, we're, Dave's in the process of, of redoing the board uh, layout again because to, to design a new amplifier in there. And, and, you know, that takes a lot of time, uh, effort uh, to test everything, to get the board laid out, and then to also make sure we can get those parts, those amplifiers. So we ended up finding a, a much better amplifier that will give us much better sound quality. So it kind of worked out, but it'll it'll delay some of the production of boards. We did, you know, we have been buying a lot of boards in reserve and trying to, you know, we have Atlas also, you know, in line for those boards, and and uh, so it's, uh, you know, it, that's a that's a has taken a lot of time and and uh, probably the majority of Dave's time now has been focusing on how to make sure we keep the production going. Wow. So it it, it sounds like it, it's you're, it's a full-time job. <laughs> no, no, like I said, those guys are doing it. I, I keep in, you know, I, yeah. I know what's going on and, you know, I, uh, I, yeah, like I say, I work, uh, you know, an hour a day, that's about it. Just you know, on the computer, I look at everything. I've always stayed on top of all that stuff and, and, and just ask questions and find out what's going on and, and you know, offer uh, advice uh, here and there. But, you know, the majority of my time now is uh, renovating my house and trimming trees and playing golf. And, and uh, you know, it, it, at the very beginning, it was real hard. I, I kept going in all last summer and I was breaking up containers and packing orders and 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 doing that stuff in the warehouse and getting the new warehouse up and painted and shelling and organized, that type of thing. And then I went to Florida and I just said, when I come home, I just can't do that again. I got I, I got to make it one way or the other. And so I, I enjoy, I spend a lot more time with my wife. My wife plays golf too. So that's, you know, mm -hmm. makes it uh, easy uh, to, to be able to travel and, and, and enjoy, enjoy. I don't want to, I don't want to wait until I um, uh, uh, physically unable to, to enjoy uh, the fruits of my labor. And I've, I've done it for, you know, I've been in this business for over 50 years, including the time I was with Williams. And, and uh, so, Wow. Um, these guys are fully capable. They've been in the business as, uh, almost as long as I have, uh, the number of years that they have. And, uh, um, you know, uh, Andy Edelman's still doing the, all the marketing uh, stuff. He's a subcontractor uh, for us and for Atlas, I believe. Um, and uh, anyway, it's, um, uh, uh, I'm enjoying it and I, I, and I still get to do something with it because I, I still do enjoy making things and and uh, i wish i could like say go to china and start uh some of the tooling that we have uh moved to another uh 
uh, vendor. We we that's the other thing is that the vendors overseas are, are friends of mine, and and a couple of them wanted to keep going and keep the companies. And I said, well, I can you know we get the new tools, and you can you can contact those companies and use those. But you know that they had the security of us. Uh, doing the stuff for years and years, and so they're still doing it. So we're still delivering. We just get uh, delivered to scale of Pacific. So, so the steam engines are still being made in Korea. The scale steam engines. So that will continue. Those guys. I've worked with those two guys that own that factory since uh, in the eighties. The they were they were wow. working at San Hongsa, and and so these guys are you know the good friends of mine, and I still keep in touch with the the one we closed one factory in China, and and. Uh, I still keep in touch with the the owner of the factory. We call him once a week, just talking, and, and and the other factories taking on a lot more of the uh, work, and and uh, so you know they're doing fine. And 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 one of the subcontractors uh, is starting is making our track. Who was making the track before for the uh, other subcontractors? So they want to do more more items and maybe the tin plate stuff. So I'd, li I'd really like to do some more tin plate, um, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I, I, we don't want any inventory. I'm not, you know, very little inventory. Maybe some track or switches are at, at times for a period of time. But uh, I don't, you know, our warehouse went from uh, 123,000 square feet to wow. uh, 14,000 14, square feet. And, you know, we have the parts business in there. And that's the other thing that uh, I'm, a, I'm a partner, a three-way partner with uh, Mark Hip, who's my brother-in-law. Um, and he's there day to day uh, running it, and we uh, took one employee that was in uh, uh, the parts and, and uh, service area of the company, and he's he's pulling all the parts and and doing that. So it has that one employee plus the Mark and I and then Mike Reagan, and Mike Reagan helped us with uh, setting up the whole thing and the, the website. I encourage everybody to go to the website uh, MTH Parts and Sales, um, and you can see. Uh, uh, that the, it looks a lot like the Lionel website because he he was in uh, um, involved in in setting that whole parts business up. So it you, yeah you can uh, it very easy. But people always complained about how hard it was to get parts from us, and now they they ship those parts every day um, as they get them in and keep up with it. And it and it has been really doing well. And, and, uh, he's been working on the exploded views and, and keeps adding and adding. And we have skids and skids and skids of parts that have never been opened. Um, uh, you know, that they're, they take a skid and they work on that after they fill the orders all day, then they, they're working on breaking down skids and taking pictures of it and, you know, measuring them and, 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 and creating, uh, you know, search names and that type of thing uh, to, to to find them, um, and and listing those parts. So more and more parts. So keep up and look look that uh, uh, yeah. If there's a part that you want, there's a there's a wish list for it. So if it pops up, then you'll get an email and say that uh, um, that you know that this uh, part has come in, and you can go go online and buy it. So uh, that helps a lot. You know, those parts fit all the old trains and also the new ones that we're making now. Um, a lot of service parts there, smoke units that you can put in buildings and LED lights and, and all that stuff is, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find there. Yeah, and so that's great. still involved in that. And, mm -hmm. and one thing on your uh, parts and sales, uh, when we spoke with Mike, uh, the other Mike. Um, little Mike? Yeah, little Mike. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you guys really have transitioned and, you know, uh, have new businesses created. And it's going to take time to create all those listings for parts. And it's just, you know, each train has so many parts. So yeah. it, it's a lot of work. And I see a lot of, uh, you know, some people saying some parts aren't available, but g give them time because, you know, just moving out of your your 120, you know, foot thousand uh, warehouse is just the uh, overture, you know, uh, going. Well, you know, every, so. every production we would used to get uh, a box of like spare parts and and but the problem was we just didn't have the manpower to take them and and break them all up and put them up and we didn't have a website to sell them. So it wasn't profitable to do it. And the, 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 the productions were coming in so fast. It, the boxes would just get stacked on on pallets and put up on the rack and 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 it is amazing the the amount of parts that you know when we went to clean it out in the samples uh you know that the we 
the auction house was selling those samples and I was shocked of, of all this, the stuff that we actually had in there. I forgot all about some of the stuff at, at one time we were buying unpainted kits for tin plate stuff, 10 of each so that we'd have them in the future to paint because back then it, we weren't digitally modifying the pictures in the catalogs. We were actually having somebody paint samples. So we were buying them like that. And then wow. once we, we started digitally doing them, then we stopped buying them, but all those samples, we're still there. And, and, uh, it was just to, to clean that place out was, you know, that took months and months of, of just, it was just terrible as far as, uh, dirty and, and a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And I was, I made a lot of runs to the dumpster in the back and the crusher. <laughs> well, so that that's great, Mike. So, uh, for those who are just joining us, a lot of news, um, MTH is still in business, even though that they, they trimmed and uh, sold some of their tooling. There, there is a separate parts and uh, sales website for their parts um, that they're, they're working on. They're going to be listing. And Rich Foster is at MTH now, and he is uh, producing some great exclusive runs and regular product with MTH. But it, it's a trimmed down version where it's, you know, uh, get your pre-orders in because they're not holding a lot of stock and they don't have the room unless they're going to put it in Mike's basement. <laughs> yeah, I, like I say, that was part of the, the deal with Rich. So we build what we get orders for. So, and, and then the custom runs is great because then the dealer, you know, he figures out what he can sell and they take them all. So for us, it's in, it's out. And, right. and uh, like, we just don't have the room. If anybody, if some of the dealers who, who drive down and, and stop in there to, to pick up this stuff, it's packed. And when a container comes in, it's, it's right. full. And if a second one comes in a few days later, you, they, they're working long hours to, to make sure they get everything out so that there's room for the no, next one. So we don't have the room for the inventory, which also, you know, the, the, the amount of money, people don't realize what the, the amount of money that is tied up in the inventory and then the dating and and all of that and I told them I said look I'm not it's not going to be the size that it was and it needs to turn and we're not going to we're not going to you know at times we had on average six and a half million dollars worth of inventory sitting there and so that we had all of the accessories and buildings and cars and everything that somebody could buy you know all year round and so that's no longer it's going to be we're going to we take a diesel we advertise four road names we find out from the dealers what they want is a an exclusive and then we promote those exclusive with with email so you know the the to sign up for our newsletter go to our website sign up for our newsletter and you'll get emails of the items that are that are being made and then um you can uh you know, uh, contact if it is an exclusive contact the dealer directly, or, and and uh, um, if you know are the regular stuff, all the dealers you, yourself, you go to trainworld.com and buy it. Uh, but you, there's a lot. You guys have a lot of exclusives. We're we're uh, also doing the uh, the G gauge again. We just started that with the SD seventies, taking orders on those, and and actually, you know, with COVID, it was it was kind of the right timing because the the you know the people are are you know, uh, going down their basements and, and spending and building those, finally building those layouts. And, and so the business has actually been very good, uh, you know, the last couple of years, I don't give rich credit for that, but, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's, 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 uh, it's been, it's been good. Uh, rich did a great job and he actually never mentions you at all. He, he, <laughs> he did all the work. He emptied the warehouse. He set up the new place. <laughs> we thought you were totally out and gone just on the 18th hole every day. That's it. <laughs> he wants me. He keeps telling me to stop doing stuff, but you know. Rich said you really need to work on his game, so he tries to get you out as much as possible so he, he you could catch up to his golfing level. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, one one big big thing is that the York train show was never the same no more without when the manufacturer wasn't there the last time. Um, do you think you'll make some kind of surprise visit, show up, talk, uh, anything at this October? TCA show in Pennsylvania. No, because I will be in <laughs> Georgia golfing with a group from uh, our, our couples group. So my wife <laughs> and all the couples are going on a, a trip this this October. Never say never. I mean, I enjoyed going to York and and uh, 
you know, uh, seeing all the guys and, and you know, I've, a lot of those people at York I've known for years and years and years. And it's, it's you know, I'd like to see them and, uh, you know, I, I will go back, but as far as that, not at a booth. Okay. What, what if we set up a satellite type thing and from the golf course, you just show up on the satellite? <laughs> my wife about that if you could get that through that'd, that'd be amazing <laughs> <laughs> that's, but that's, it's, it's definitely not the same i tell you always going to york and meeting you and seeing you and you tell it like it is and uh nobody's gonna pull one over you that's for sure it's uh it, it just uh you heard it from the horse's mouth every time every time with you and uh it's uh was uh it, it, you made the industry. You made it uh, made it a great trip to York for sure. Everybody uh, wanted to see you and go over things and talk. Um, I hope you come back. I really do. It's uh, it's I, something we need. We need you there. We need you there. And I think that's a big difference between you know your, yourself and a lot of uh, companies out there. You know, you're, you're really a man of the people. You know, you you really shook hands with everyone at the shows, um, spoke with everyone, told them and uh, worked on everyone's uh, if, if they had issues or uh, ideas or, you know, just praise. You know, you, you spoke with everyone, no, no matter what it was, you didn't pass the buck and you, you got stuff done, um, you know, obviously. But, um, you know, it, it it's really great to see. And you could tell by all the forums and, you know, everybody was uh you know, so sad to to hear once there was rumblings uh, about what was happening. So I think everyone will be happy to know that, you know, you're still involved in the hobby. You have the parts and sales business, and hopefully we get more uh, parts going and listings up and they'll be able to uh, keep on repairing their older trains and as well as uh, all the new stuff that, that you have coming up. And, you know, Rich is doing a great job with the announcements and you still have your team together. You got Andy uh, doing the artwork. So, and images, he's been working with us on a lot of exclusive stuff. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, comments about the G scale and uh, you just had uh, some announcements on the SD70 aces that you have. And we're also doing uh, exclusives with you guys on those as well. So you, you're still making a lot of stuff. I, and quite honestly, it's probably just as much stuff. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. The volume the volume is is pretty much the same as the years a uh, couple of the last years, but you know, instead of thirty five employees, you're doing it with four employees and and obviously <laughs> the subcontractors. So but uh, um, you know it it, uh, it, it th this model um, is I think right for the times and right for, it's right for me. Uh, as far as that goes and the amount of, of, of what goes into, it. I really would like to, you know, it broaden it a little bit more with the, with, uh, um, you know, if, if I could get overseas, uh, because I think that, that, you know, some of this stuff is, is really, you have to see and, and, and go over it. Otherwise you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it just, it doesn't get right. But if you sit down for a week and go over all the pieces and, and how you want it and, and what it needs to look like and, you know, what to look out for and, and go over all that stuff uh, at one time, it's, it, you know, when you start with translations, it gets difficult. So I'm looking forward to when China opens back up to talking about maybe November of this year, but uh, um you know, I don't I just have to wait and see. But, I, you know, Rich is busy enough. So we got the Z4000s coming in next month. They, they're on the water. That took a long time. That was an electronic part nightmare. So anything with electronics in it, I mean, you're going to see you're going to see delays. Um, you know, the DCS, the Wi-Fi DCS has been delayed. I, we're hoping November unless we get some kind of another part uh, uh, canceled on us or changed on us. Um, but, uh, you know, we're that we're excited about that the the uh it'll it'll be all contained in one like the TIU box four channels it'll have variable dc so you can run the g gauge with it you can run the ho with it you can uh as far as just regular conventional ho uh you can run with it uh, and run it with the app you can uh you'll be able to download sound files uh just using your phone now and not having to go on a computer and 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 you know, the, the the old way would you open an app on your computer and then have to transfer. Now you can just go on the app and say, 
you know, go to the, take the sound file and load it in my engine. Um, so that, that there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, technical, uh, make it easier for settings and, and that type of thing. Uh, and, and also to connect to your home Wi-Fi, that'll be much easier right now. You have to download or go to a, uh, a, a website with a program they call Lucy, and then you have to set up the you know the, the talking between your modem and the and the, the TIU. So this it'll all go through the app, and you know obviously the the, the voice communication that you'll be able to talk to the to the train, talk to your phone and or or the iPad and 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 you know voice commands to to run the trains. Uh, that's common. Uh, so there's, you know, I'm excited about that side. I've always been excited about the the digital part. I just never knew that this, uh, uh, you know, you never, the, the, all the electronic parts, I never uh, imagined it would get this bad. I mean, there was at the beginning, they were talking about how you better hurry up and get your orders in, which we did, uh, but never thought it would get this this bad. And, and, uh, and it's causing a lot of prices to go up. I mean, there's parts, we we paid for parts that that were seventy cents, and we paid ten dollars a piece for them just to get the part, just to make it because we can't shut down the production line. So on an engine, we just lost you know that margin off of it, but we need to keep the the uh, uh, production going. Otherwise, the, the the factories in in China and Korea go out of business because they still have to pay their employees, they have to pay the rent, all that stuff. So. You know, you, you, you got to do whatever you can do. And if you can't find the part, you got to redesign. And that takes time, uh, a lot of time. And, you know, to, to verify everything works and the size is all the same. And, and you know, uh, uh, it doesn't affect something else uh, with the new part. So, wow. Yep. Mike, with the Z4000, this, this uh, shipment coming in, when will the next one be after that? Or is there another? Or, there won't be without a total redesign because there are like 10 parts in there that are totally gone and one of them is the processor um so they don't even make them anymore so i ended up buying those on the on the uh, before uh, about three years ago that happened and i bought enough for the these production runs because i was thinking about doing this and i thought well that'll be the end of it you know and we'll have to do a redesign and bought the parts to do them and so the last production and this production so the z4000s that are coming that's going to be it for a while i never say never we still own all the tooling uh to to make it we got the the you know the technology the software of, of it would have to be totally rewritten because when you change the processor and also the language of the processors is all changed so we'd have to rewrite the code but and then we have to go through the ul process and that's Thirty-five thousand dollars minimum to 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 pay UL just to go through that process of getting that transformer UL approved, and so it, it would take a redesign. I won't I won't say I won't do it, um, but it it would have to there have to be a demand, and so you're probably looking at three or four years before, or five years before you ever see another Z four thousand. Uh, so I well, should call the distributors tomorrow and get all I can. I don't think any. I, I just don't think that the distributors. You know, they, they they bought big inventory. Those they're expensive, and you know, it's it's. And no one knew. I mean, when I say that, they're just uh, uh, they're they're, uh, they're going to be hen's teeth. I can tell you. Yeah. We're already eighty yeah. percent sold out. So <laughs> if you didn't place a pre-order, you better scramble now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, unbelievable. And I know a lot of people are excited for the DCS uh, Wi-Fi uh, digital command system. So I, I think that's going to be really interesting to see. And we have tons of pre-orders on it. So yeah. Um, and, and then we got to worry about how do we get the, the next run made? Like I say, we got AIUs there. Finally, we got the parts and, and the AIUs are in the water. Uh, but yeah, it's you know we've had all the all the electronics. Like I said, I never was going to get out of the electronics business, but you can kind of see it's dried up because it's really just a, a part issue. And if we can't get it, that you know we go into the redesign. Um, I mean, stupid little things like just to control the the smoking whistle. Uh, we added the smoking whistle on the scale steam engines, and we developed a brand new board. And all of a sudden, they say, "Oh no, you can't get the processor." And you know, that's the part we ended up paying ten dollars for. That was a seventy cent part, uh, just so we can get scale steam engines uh, yeah. made and keep those guys moving. So it's it's 
It's wow. crazy out there. Well, I got to say, I thank you guys for not increasing your prices like a lot of other manufacturers did. We kind of got screwed last Christmas with uh, people adding 10, uh, manufacturers adding 10 and 15% to everything else. And uh, you guys didn't do it. I thank you very much for that. Yeah, well, you know, the, the prices as, as they come out, I mean, it, it, if it goes up at our cost, I mean, I can't change prices I already made a deal with. But, um, you know, the... the uh, uh, if it goes up to the point, I mean, that that uh, um, then prices are going to I think we're going to get inflation in this business, just like any other business uh, out of China. Um, plastics, you know, plastics has oil in it. Um, you know, we got to wait till 2024 before we start seeing oil prices come back down. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. Mm. Uh, and uh, any kind of a catalog in the future, anything like that? Uh, well, that was the other thing. It's going to be all electronic. So you got to sign up for the e-newsletter. Uh, you know, the, the print those catalogs, then you are committing to the product. And for now, if we don't get the orders for it, and fortunately, everything that Rich has picked so far, we've gotten orders for enough orders to build the thing. So I don't want to be in a situation where you put out this big catalog. And, and obviously right now, it, you know, the way it's working is I think better for the consumer because, you know, when it comes out, he can make a decision. He wants that, that item or not, um, and, and, and commit to it. And, and then, it, th then he knows it's going to get made if we don't cancel it within the next uh, 30 days. So, um, they know the, the schedule on it. We can hold a schedule because there's so many, when you get so many items and, and some, something that you can't get or something's delayed or you had a problem with something got, uh, you know, in production or something and everything gets shifted around. So, um, all the variety that we made, I think we made, you know, obviously that's how we made our business, but we got, we were, we had so many lines and products in those lines that, that's it was it's that's hard to control and takes a lot of people to control it and uh there's a lot of money to control it and uh so i you know the way it's working now i think uh if it, it's 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 working so well i'm it's it's going to be our model i believe yeah that's great and i guess looking back on things are do, do you wish you just uh stayed the same or are you happy with you know uh, doing a mix of both, uh, you know, working a little and enjoying life at the same time. I'd, I'd recommend this to anybody. I mean, I've been telling Ken Senior, you know, <laughs> leave, leave Junior's well capable. I'm gonna tell you, there's, but I know he's he's starting to do that a little bit. You know, he's he he likes fishing like I like golf. So, um, I mean, look, uh, everybody, you get to the point in your life where you 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 still have your health and you have your family and you want to just. Uh, you know, enjoy some of that and, and, and spend the time with them. I mean, I spent a, a lot of time in Asia. I was going over there four or five times a year and, and, you know, going to shows and, and at work at long hours. And so, you know, my wife's you know, very uh, understanding and, and that, but I want to, you know, I'm going to spend time with more time with her and, and I got grandkids and I want to spend time with them. And, you know, you, you, uh, they're just, uh, I work long enough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. The timing of everything seemed to be right at the beginning of COVID. Was it COVID that kind of made that decision? No, uh, I, I was thinking about it. And, and, and actually, I was thinking about it for probably five years. I was thinking about how to do it. Um, the big thing was the building. I mean, I, I owned the building. Um, I, I was... Uh, paying myself rent, so the building was paying uh, the rent. I, I had a mortgage on it, but not so much. And and uh, but so to get out of the building, I needed to sell it. So I had the building up for sale for over five years. You know, uh, to to m make that step, and then I could always go rent someplace if you know, depending on the size that that we wanted to do. But so I, it was always in the back of my mind how to and talking to my wife. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. But, you know, uh, and then once I started going down to Florida and staying down there, I tell you, you just you get uh, it, it, once you get a taste of it, it's real hard to go back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, this this winter was the first time I spent time in Florida and the winters down there is like the summers up in New England. That it's it's amazing yeah. down there. Oh, it's, it's it's the weather and 
you know, then you get associated with uh, groups. And I, I play golf uh, four days a week with different groups and guys. And then you're going out and you're traveling with them and socializing. And so it's it, it's a lot of fun and right. and uh, I enjoy it. And and uh, but I also still, you know, I, I still like making stuff. I still like fixing stuff. I <laughs> I'm working around this house. You know, I haven't played much golf in Maryland because I've been working around the house. And, you know, I, I'll change electrical outlets. I'll I'll you know, do plumbing. I'll do, um, I was out there all weekend with a chainsaw and a, I rented a big 45 lift, uh, you know, bucket lifter and, and went up there and, and saw the probably, I don't know, 30 trees. And then the landscape guys would go at the bottom grinding, you know, pulling them away and grinding them up. So, you know, I, I, I enjoy doing all that stuff. I like, I, I like fixing stuff. I like, uh, you know, I'm the pool man here. Uh, so, you know, I, I still want to do something. I got to do something. I can't, I, I'm not, I'm not a, a TV watcher. Or a, you know, I get up at uh, five, five thirty in the morning and go to bed at eight and nine o'clock at night. So. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that, very good. Very good, Mike. Yeah. yeah living the dream. Living the dream. Yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> You're gonna have to show, give a couple of pointers to my father when he goes down on on golf. He, I don't think he's uh, played one game in his life, so you, yeah. you're gonna have to give a couple of pointers. <laughs> I think I could do pretty good. I think <laughs> it's just a temperament. You can't, you can't get mad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, so so you have a lot uh, on the pipeline, and I I guess in terms of new tooling, do you want to create and make more trains, and I guess de develop more trains, or you're you're gonna still kind of uh, I guess with COVID as a factor, just try to um, uh, continue what you have and try to build on those new relationships and over. Yeah, we've time. looked at a, a few new tools, but I think you know we're gonna stay in the engine and the, the uh, we might do a few buildings. So buildings are fun sometimes with the when you know the the some of the names rich comes up with but, but you know not a big line of buildings you'll see a building once in a while but the, as far as engines so yeah I, I mean there may be some new tooling i mean look if i knew what we're doing right now i would not have sold all the tools i sold mm. but that, wow. so the plan really was to sell everything but we didn't get anybody who wanted to buy everything and so i think it was a big mistake by, by some of the uh, companies or companies that didn't end up getting anything uh, it was a big mistake because there's there, I, now, you know, with seeing this model work with this limited amount of people and over, and building and overhead and seeing, you know, the, as far as the pre-ordering type thing and the online marketing and, and how to, uh, you know, do it efficiently. Um, this model, I think, is, uh, you know, is a good model, um, you know, for us. And, and so to, to make some new products with some new features and and keep on expanding the electronics part of it um you know will there be new scale steam engines i don't think so not for uh, you know i just don't think that that the market size uh is big enough it hasn't been for years as far as like, you don't see somebody popping out the steam engines like we used to i mean we back then you know, the tool prices were a lot cheaper and and uh, the, the the piece prices were a lot cheaper. So now with the piece prices that they, they are, you need a big volume to, to get new tools. But diesel engines, freight cars, passenger cars, those type of things, sure. I mean, I think I can see us uh, developing when we're actually working on a, a project now, new tool product. Uh, so the answer is yes, we'll, we'll do uh, do more of that. Um, but uh you know, right now, you know, this this model is a uh, is just a little over a year old, and and uh, you know, it's working well. But um, you know, we got to see what the economy keeps uh, doing, and 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 you know, adjust that way. But I I think I think it's gonna it'll work for a long period of time. How long, Rich? Rich might get the same bug I do. I don't know, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's don't let him go. <laughs> I, I, I saw a couple of comments from Rich Foster. He's watching now, so uh, I, I, I was gonna uh, put it up there, but uh, Rich always yeah, he... snarky. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll let you two duke it out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, 
it's great stuff. Great stuff. Great industry. Great, great people. Great camaraderie. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to walk away from something that like this. Like, uh, I enjoy going to work every day like you did and still do. My son does the same thing. He's doing 10, 12 hours a day, my son, because he wants to. It just, yeah. uh, I don't pay him any extra. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's just a passion thing. We're all in it for the yeah. for the love of trains. That's what yeah. that's what it is. And a lot of people will never understand that. That unless you get into this hobby, then you will you will understand what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. There's no question. And then the people are good. I mean, yeah. family oriented people, uh, which you know, for me, that's why. That's the kind of, you know, the salt of the earth kind of, of people that's, you know, I, I grew up with. And I think that's why it attracted to this industry uh, since I was a young kid. it it uh, the, I've always enjoyed it and I always enjoyed going to York. I went to York because I enjoyed it. I, you know, yeah. I, there was a lot of times that I could have gone someplace else or maybe been let those guys go. But you know, I enjoyed it. So I keep I kept going. And actually, those guys wanted to quit going to York long before I did. I said, no, I got to keep going to York as long as I'm in it. You're, we're going <laughs> yeah. You know, most people say, thank God it's Friday and they go out drinking and stuff. The train guys go, thank God it's Sunday. Go to a train show. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That, that's that's why you're a man of the people, Mike. It, it's it's true. Everybody really loved you, and um, you know, just going to those shows, it it made a big difference. And uh, yeah. I I think that's a big part of uh, your company's success. And um, you know, and you guys did gr great things at the shows too. You know, uh, DCS seminars and you you uh, the tents. Uh, you know, you you guys always uh, try to innovate and. Uh, you know, make things better. You, you never yeah. uh, stood pat. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, it's funny also, you know, I, I was watching the, the Elvis movie and uh, they talked about Elvis was in Hawaii, but uh, did a live cast and, you know, all people throughout the world saw it. And, you know, one of the coolest things that we've done on this show was you were actually, I think it was the first ever a live view from your factory in China and the amount of uh, emails, feedback, views that, that you did on the show was unbelievable. And, and it, it was just wild. It was a first groundbreaking event. And, you know, you, you were like, okay with doing it. And no one's really ever opened up their factory like that before. It was just something that was unbelievable. And I, I, I truly think it was like the, one of the coolest things that happened to us, uh, you know, and that we were able and fortunate enough to be a part of. So uh, that was like one of the coolest things. And it, today, till, till this day, that was like the, the highest mm -hmm. amount of, uh, uh, you know, viewers at the same time, just wanting to see, you know, inside that door of the factory, because no one's really ever seen a, a factory before. And for, you know, Mike to open up the his doors and to, to you know, because a lot of companies are very secretive and, you know, it's proprietary, you know, nobody wants to shed any light on that. But, you know, you were in there uh, sweating, running around and uh, uh, showing up your, your camera all it, over. So. I think it's important that people understand, you know, what goes into it. Because when you're spending, and these guys spend a lot of money, uh, you know, our average customer spends about 5500 a year back when we were surveying the thing and uh, on model trains. And so they're spending a lot of uh, money and, and to know what goes into it, because when you see what goes into it, then you... You, you understand it more with all the tooling. And uh, so you got to see that and the die cast and how all that stuff made. So it's not just, you know, snapped together and pops all out, in the, uh, out of the mold. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here renovating my house and I, you know, I, I was stupid, but I threw away my fireplace, you know, the doors on the fireplace that we had, because, you know, you wanted something, my wife wanted something a little more modern or whatever. So I, I should have thrown it in a dumpster, but then I went out and fat, looked around and, you know, they're like three thousand dollars, and I and I look at it from a manufacturing perspective, and I think there's no way. I mean, I can't you know, a scale steam engine, and and people say, well, fifteen hundred dollars for a scale steam engine is a lot of money, and I'm looking at this thing and I'm trying to compare it, and there's no 
there's no comparison. So I thought, you know, yeah. if people can see really what goes into what they're buying and, and all the different parts that go go into that and the processes, it's it's amazing. And, and I've always enjoyed going to subcontractors and seeing a, a process of how something's made. And once you do, you really appreciate more you know, the, the effort and the, the design work and the, the engineering and all that kind of stuff that goes into it. So, you know, what these people have uh, and they've been accumulating is is worth the money. And you go out, to, you know, even the, the old stuff and it's always has been the old Lionel stuff. And why? It's because it's something that it's there's there's not there's a limited amount of model train manufacturers in the world. And there's a reason for that, because it's it uses so much so many different processes and so many different uh you know things go into it and so i thought it was important that people see that and get an appreciation for what they're what they're buying well mth was definitely like the david and goliath story you tackled the biggest giants in the industry and showed them you could make it better you can make it cheaper you can make more different items than anybody else uh, without you we'd still be uh selling you know, not so great stuff, that's for sure. But it's uh, I've always said competition is a good thing, it makes makes our products better because you know, when you got yeah. competition, everybody's trying to do a little bit better, you know, to, to keep the their market share. And and so, it, it has developed competition. You know, Jerry Williams, you know, taught me that uh, early on. So, you know, you you uh, you do something a little better than the next guy, then they try to do a little bit better and back and forth. and End result that consumers, the more competition you have, the consumers are better off. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, for sure. I, and and it's amazing because you you really started off reselling trains, and then you you became you know a, a Goliath in manufacturing, and you know it, it's a household name. Everybody knows MTH trains without a doubt. If you're in, in the uh, train industry, it's just huge. So mm -hmm. it, it, you, what you've accomplished is uh, just Amazing, Mike. It's really oh, incredible, you. and uh, I, I'm thank sure you. you should be very. Thank proud. you for the, for, for the gifts that you sent me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, know, I, I know Ken Senior made this one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> much better pricing. <laughs> yeah. Remind me while I was out there enjoying the the weather in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, we we hope you enjoy it and use it. And um, I, I just want to go over a, a couple of products that we're, we're actually um, doing exclusive uh, with MTH. And you guys do a great job with this stuff. And uh, let me see if I could uh, squeeze this out of here. Hold on one second. So uh, you guys, are, we, we teamed up with MTH and they're doing exclusive runs with us. Uh, New York, New Jersey engines. Um, uh, trolleys, the bump and goes are still a huge hit, Mike. Uh, we, we have tons of those. Uh, box cars, uh, we're making hoppers. Um, these actually just came in, and I'll, I'll show a little sample today. And this came from uh, Rich, Rich was said he was sweating all week. This, uh, he was, uh, he was complaining. <laughs> you heard that story too. <laughs> Two containers, you know, he, had, he said he had. <laughs> I had to drive down and get some Gatorade. I mean, that was it. <laughs> I, I used to unload those containers on a regular basis. In, in the early days, there used to be four a month. So one comes in every every uh, month and a half, and and you, you never, I've never heard anybody complain so much. But anyway. <laughs> yep. so, so we're getting tons of product from you guys. We just got a big shipment, so we'll be uh, shipping out some uh, a lot of MTH this week. Uh, so bear with us, and uh, they'll be ready to pick up hopefully by uh, this week as well. Um, and G scale, uh, a lot of G, uh, G scalers out there. Uh, the SD seventies. Uh, we're we're actually doing the CSX first uh, responders and uh, the the um, uh, different paint schemes. E even though it's not prototypical, there's no ES forty fours on the market. So why not? It's it's a beautiful looking paint scheme, really unique. Um, so I, I think these will do very well and, uh, you know, and it's a great price point. These actually have yeah. sound. Yeah. Sound smoke, uh, you know, that they, they've, uh, ditch lights, actually the, that the 
the modeling and the tooling for that engine was, was as it was done off of the HO one, which means has all the inserts to make all the doors and the vents and the windows and everything prototypical. Now, uh, for the for an actual SD70, whether it's a Union Pacific version, whether it's CSX version, whether it's a you know a Norfolk and Southern, so all of their uh, specific. Uh, safety equipment, all that kind of stuff. That's all in the G gauge. So we basically took the HO drawings and then went to the G gauge. The O gauge was uh, before the HO. And once we got in the HO, the HO guys want everything prototypical. And so we spent a lot of money in tooling and all, all those inserts cost a lot of money and the change. And when you go to mold them, they have to uh, set it up with the right combination of the details, mold those bodies, take the tool off, let it cool off, change all those inserts to make the next road name and mold them and then mold and heat the tool back up and then mold it again. And in the machine for those uh, bodies is two stories tall. I mean, there's a hole in the floor that goes up to the second floor. So the molding machine is big enough to inject those uh, bodies. So to, to take the molds in and out of those machines is, is a, a lot of work, but those engines have been very successful. Uh, the first ones that came out are, are all gone in the marketplace. Um, it, they, they sold out uh, pretty quick. And so we said, well, we got we got to do those again. It's, it's got a great sound system, loud as all. I, I enjoyed going to Germany to, uh, to the uh, Markland show and putting that thing up there and blowing that horn. And I tell you, oh, the... The, my, the other dealers were coming over here. Can you turn that thing down? Can you turn it down? <laughs> coming into our tent, wanted to know where the train was. You know that the, the, the big train, and and uh, it was it, that. It's so loud, so clear. Uh, you know, the, it's got a nice big speaker in it, and and uh, real, they really run nice. Uh, so yeah, the G gauge is has. We're going to do get back into that, and uh, you know, I thought I was going to sell some of that tooling and I, and I ended up holding off on that because the, the plan started changing. And, and so I still have all the G gauge uh, tooling. So we still got the G and, and, uh, you know, rail King and, and uh, the O gauge, but uh, no more HO, no more S gauge. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty much done with those. Uh, but they, you know, for O scale, they, there's tons of product uh, this we uh, Andy just worked on the uh, artwork, um, the defending freedom, uh, caboose, just really nice stuff. And y your team does a great job working with us. I, I will say they make those long, those long islands with pups are really beautiful. Yes, yes. And, yeah. uh, and I, color styles. I mean, those things, you're going to sell those. I can remember, you know, there was a custom run item that I was saying, you Rich, call call Ken up and tell him that number is so low. <laughs> Bam! You sit in next day. You call up. You say, "Hey, can we still get some more of those?" Uh, so, you know, the, as the the, uh, the customers, you know, get your orders in for the. If you like those, yeah. get yeah. your orders in for because there gets to be a point where they can't get them again. Uh, uh, you know, but yeah, the the color the color sells and. With these custom things, you can just go to town. I mean, there's so many old companies. I, I would strongly recommend, and I have a, a, a somewhat of a little library that I've gone over years, and I see uh, an old art advertiser, and, you know, some kind of a some kind of product, Ajax, or what? You know, all, there's all kinds of different uh, commercial products that that have big names that, but they they had different logos and different artwork and scenes with you know families around it. You go get some of those products and put them, uh, you know, on cars, they'll sell. I mean, people, this is a nostalgia business. Uh, you know, we're in a nostalgia business and, and you put nostalgia on the side like that route 66. And, and uh, you know, the, the, the other thing is, like I said, it's a family oriented business, the military stuff, the American flag, all that stuff is, is very popular. Um, so, you know, when you're starting to think about, it, it, it's not just your local railroads. It's there's a lot of uh, commercial, uh, old time art advertising, old advertising that that is some beautiful stuff of what they put together. Um, you know, back in the day, and you put those on the side of the cars, and they've, they've always been successful for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely got to get your orders in, guys. This way, we know if we got to add more, or because if we don't. Uh, if we don't order enough, then we're going to have to just stop taking orders. You need to definitely get your pre-orders in. 
at trainworld.com, no deposits, and uh, it sells. It sells very well, this uh, custom stuff. Uh, I think we sell bigger quantities of one number in custom stuff than regular stuff. It just, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's in demand. People want to see something different today. And uh, whether it's fantasy scheme or something that uh, brings back a memory to them, it's, uh, you got to jump on it when you can because once they're gone, they're gone. That's it. And Mike and his factories, they, they do work with the dealers and the, the runs are realistic where, you know, dealers are able to move them quickly. And, you know, it everybody out there really needs to move to pre-ordering because a lot of this stuff is just pre-sold out. It's uh, just unbelievable. And it's uh, coming in, going out, and uh, w which helps both the dealers and the manufacturers. But for yeah. you guys, you know, if you see it and you like it, you, you're, you're going to have to uh, grab it while, while you can. Um, it's uh, sign up for, you know, the MTH uh, um, uh, email sales or email uh, uh, newsletters. And our we have email sales as well. Um, so sign up for those news newsletters to to get all that information because if you miss it, you know you're gonna miss it. <laughs> are, you, are you still taking orders on those Long Islands? See, I, I'm not into that. You know what? What everything's coming in and 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 if you're still, but I tell you what, probably Ken Senior put that number too low because those are beautiful. I mean, I I, I always pride myself on a knack when I could see something. I said I know that's gonna sell and that's gonna sell. There's yeah. no question uh, in my mind that'll be a big number. Yes, I, I think these are beautiful. And uh, Ken Senior already put in a too low number. I guarantee. Watch, just watch. <laughs> I, I, can, I know him. <laughs> but there's four different ones. Four it different doesn't ones. matter. If four of them is uh, four four cars in a in a ninety car train. You know, and and it, it, if you ever see a real train going by, they always got the same car back to back to back to back. So uh, having four numbers, you, you need 12 numbers. Uh, soon as I see the guys ordering one of each, then I'll I'll bump my order. Yeah, well, you got to run four four together. I mean, when I say that, and then you, and you, you're going to get guys, but get eight together. I mean, th those military vehicles that we were putting on those things, you know, they were buying them in six cars, four cars. Uh, sets and buying multiple sets because to get a, a train that looks realistic, you need to have, you know, uh, a lot of cars on that, a lot of freight cars on the train. I mean, these engines will pull 100 cars and people run 100 cars on their layouts or, you know, big numbers. And so four of those cars, you know, you need a caboose also. You could get Andy to, to do one of the cabooses in the same color scheme with Long Island big, Long Island on either side, same color scheme. Uh, you know, blue and uh, the, the, the orange, I believe it is, um, and one's yellow. But you do something in that scheme and put a caboose behind it, and you'll sell them. Okay. All right. We're going to call that the, the Mike I'm Wolf looking, exclusive. I'm looking at these, and I, I, that, that stands out to me. You're going to sell those. Yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. It, it's a pop of color, and uh, I guess uh, – Someone's calling the store. They want to speak to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, they want one of those cars. Four of them. It's the one eight hundred hotline. They're, they're going crazy. We're, we're taking orders <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My son and Andy did a great job with that. They definitely uh, looks a lot better than uh, what I thought it was going to be. It's yeah. uh, pretty cool. And what I like is that big lettering. Somebody that has a big layout, you can still see it at the right. other end of the layout. It stands right. out. And the colors. I'm telling you, color sells. It just mm -hmm. it it sells. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's uh it's I mean, you think the Santa Fe war, war bonnet has always been the most popular F3 and why Lionel made it for years yeah. and years and years because it's so colorful and it's so beautiful. Yeah, um, you're hundred percent right. Yeah. Yep, color sells. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. But uh, all right, Mike. Well, I, I know you, you could probably be here talking about trains for all night. And uh, <laughs> but I, I, I really, really appreciate this because I, I, I know you're busy and uh, you just have, uh, you know, so much stuff going on with everything. So uh, being being on this interview is just uh, unbelievable. And we always appreciate seeing you talking uh, with you. And you truly are a great friend that not, not even, uh, you know, just a business relationship. But you, you I feel I feel the same. I still remember us going down there getting that fish 
down in uh, Palm, Palm Beach at Tuna. My wife still talks about that. That was the best tuna she ever had. Was, it was a black tuna. It was some, the, guy, the, the, the fisherman, he wanted that thing. He says, you can take that to a Japanese restaurant. I saw that for a lot of money, but I, I remember that one. Yeah. Yep. yeah, we'll do it again because I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Yep. <laughs> but but this time you're paying. <laughs> <laughs> you take the profits from those Long Island cars. <laughs> yeah. there, there you go. When we create the caboose tomorrow, we'll we'll use the profits and we'll 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 go out fishing. <laughs> And I and I tell you, not to be, not to you know, really. I mean, an engine, an F three, or something like that. In that, like you said, the letters are big. It it a Long Island fan, you know, just brown cars all the time. They may have those, and they're the real diehard. But the the O gauge guys are, you know, the from fantasy stuff sells. And a Long Island engine like that, uh, uh, a train. A whole train like that would be beautiful. I mean, look at the the Alaska. And I, I was just playing golf, and so they paired me up with some guy. He says, oh, you're in the trains? He says, I was just in Alaska. And that train was so beautiful because it's so yeah. colorful. And and uh, they, they, they remember that. It's not just a silver passenger car. It's it's colorful. Right. And and so those those kinds of things that guys wanted on their layout. I mean, the Long Island guys, you guys write in and tell me I'm wrong. But you know, an F3 ABA with that Long Island on there like that would, would be beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I think uh, you're on to something, Mike. That That's why you can't leave. You, you can't yeah. leave. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just reel you back in. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but All right, yeah you're right. You're right. After being in the business so long, you know, you got your finger on the button. I got my finger on the button. We know what sells. We know yeah, what sells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt. Well, you could get all your MTH trains, uh, especially what we talked about, the the uh, the uh, Wi-Fi unit, uh, the Train World exclusives at uh, trainworld.com. We're taking pre-orders. We have MTH in stock, tons of uh, O-Gage, G-Scale, um, HO trains. So make sure you go to trainworld.com and... Uh, you know, Don't forget those Z4000s. If you want one, you better buy one. I'm not joking. It, you, they're yeah. going to be hen's yeah. teeth. Yeah. So wherever, you better try to find one. Yes, mm -hmm. and hopefully Mike could uh, keep on going and keep that production up so <laughs> we all could keep on uh, pushing more trains here and you guys could keep on buying trains. And please, if you guys enjoyed tonight's episode, please give a big shout out to uh, Mike Wolf here at uh, Please thank you for taking his time out, uh, for coming on here tonight and always being so supportive of the industry, uh, whether it's a, a trade show or, uh, you know, he would always come out and not only with us, but all dealers throughout the world. He would travel and uh, make uh, appearances for us. So we, we really appreciate uh, the support. Uh, through throughout the years, Mike. You, well, been, thank uh, you, and thank you guys also. All all my dealers, all the customers. I mean, without you guys, that there, there would be no MTH. So, um, I've always I've always uh, admired and and uh, was pr proud of the fact that uh, you know the, the customers and the dealers we had friendships and loyalty and and uh, that about, it's great industry. Yeah. And uh, big shout out to Rich Foster and uh, uh, oh, don't uh, panic too much, Craig. Uh, yeah. Craig <laughs> he, won't show, he won't show up till noon tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> nah, without those guys, you couldn't have done it. I'm sorry, the great team, great team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, great, but uh, I thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Ken Sr. Thank you, everybody, for watching and joining us. Yeah. And if you want your MTH trains, go to trainworld.com. Shop online 24-7. Thank you all, and have a great night. Take care, guys. Bye.